Hello, hello. Happy Sunday and welcome back to the Upset Podcast. We're so happy that you tuned in this evening. And when I say we're, I'm talking about the most, uh, oh man, I need the right word. Uh, black. Kind of <laughs> yeah, the blackest crew <laughs> in all the land. It is Black History Month. Hey, guys. <laughs> hello. 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 <laughs> I just welcome, heard black. I'm like, get my list of adjectives and have them right here because it's hard to describe you guys. You're so, you're so awesome. But how's everybody been this week? An interesting week. Right. Oh, yeah. Doing yeah. all right. Good week. Yeah. Looking yeah, you know, yeah, I know. I was going to say last Sunday, you know, yeah. we were walking around here. Philly picking up eagle feathers. <laughs> 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 I know. I mean, I have to say, I was sad, and I'm not like even a huge football watcher, like I was saying. But even I watched, and I was sad, and I was like, "Wow, I really caught the fever," and then I felt the disappointment, as I'm sure many others did. But but that I wasn't was one of the greatest, you know, games that I've seen in the long yeah, in my lifetime. The best saying. football yeah, game I've ever seen. Good game right. to watch. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was a great season. The Eagles did incredibly well. Mm-hmm. You know, Amazing. I'm not. I'm not willing to allow perfection to become the enemy of good. I celebrate the Eagles mm. right now. Mm. I love that perfection. perfection. The enemy. Oh wow! Good. All right, I want you to go to the nearest sports bar that are <laughs> Eagles and, then, and say yeah, that. I lie, right? <laughs> <laughs> ah, I love it, I love it. But no, it was a good game. We're proud of. We're proud of the team. Hello to our viewing audience. Uh, we're happy that you tuned in this evening. We hope you're doing well. Please come on in and say hello. Hello. Yeah, he said, uh, no <laughs> Daniel said no prizes for second place. Yes, there is. We, the Philadelphia Eagles are the NFC champions of the NFL. Right? Yes, that's where we have to. There's a prize for second place. Ha. Hey. <laughs> it's one of the only championship games i think that the loser also gets paid yes, right. oh there you go yeah money money you just don't get a ring right. Right. right 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 with the adventus <laughs> <laughs> what, did, what did they give you a watch <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but that that was good. And I know people are asking, how long does it take to recover from this? Some people are still a little sad and by it, but we got to move on. We got to move on. Like you said they did well. They did well. What now else was going on? NBA with? to shine. NBA time, right? Ready for that basketball? Hello, Mike Williams. Thank yeah. you for joining us. Well, uh, I, I'd yeah. like to say, yeah. go ahead, Chuck. Let me just say real quick, terrible situation in in Turkey and Syria. Uh, When I heard the when I heard the latest fatality number, I was completely blown away. I Mm -hmm. mean, it's beyond forty five thousand. Yeah, I can't even I can't imagine those many uh, souls that uh, were lost. So it's amazing. Yeah. So I, I think to me, Chuck, I had to realize that there are people. Yes. Like they're yeah. real people yeah. over there. They're not yeah. just a number, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. And the I miracle was... stories were kind of inspiring. Sure. There were people that were in the rubble for three and four days. Yeah. Well, more than that. There was yeah. yeah, more more than a week. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. and That's there was amazing. one story that I heard where a father and son were found together, still yeah. alive. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, yeah. It humbles yeah. you. It really humbles you. I was watching some of the videos that Adra put up um because of course they have a crew there and just seeing like them there with their cameras or whatever in real time with all of this mm-hmm. rubble behind them and mm-hmm. talking about what it felt like you're hopeful that you're going to find somebody but they were saying out of the 10 people they found only three were alive so it's mm-hmm. like they're finding people but the ratio of the people they're finding alive versus deceased you know, is um, is tough. So I, I, you know, my thoughts and prayers to all of those who are out there on the front lines trying to help every day. Yeah, Hello? and uh, also um, Michigan State University uh, oh. uh, in East Lansing, Michigan. <sighs> just mm-hmm. doesn't. Uh, th- these shootings are just happening far too often. It doesn't matter if it's in elementary school, middle school, high school, college, church. Mm-hmm. Grocery store, no yeah. place yeah. is safe. 
Right. And you what you know what I heard about that? Um, that one of the students at the college was also a student at the Sandy Hook School. And so oh, this is her oh, yeah, second I did hear time that. Yeah. experiencing um, a school. Can you imagine mm. trying to get over that trauma, going to college and having no, it happen to you all over again? Mm. Well, speaking of, of shootings, uh, the city of Philadelphia has yeah. been scarred. Once again, a Temple University police officer yeah. was shot and killed approximately two blocks away, three blocks away from the North Philadelphia Church, my old neighborhood, Charles, right, at, right, mm. right around the corner from the 22nd District Police. Um, now, here's the thing, and I, I don't know how to introduce this without this being straightforward about it. The police officer uh, by the name of Chris Fitzgerald um, was father of four, young man. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is the son of, of a police officer who had worked in Philly, but had gone off to become the chief of police in, in other areas. Um, but this young man, this young man of color, an African-American man, was killed in North Philadelphia, allegedly, by a young white kid from Bucks County. Hmm. Um, it, it, it defies all of the stereotypes and, and all of the presumptions about what makes a person become violent. Um, they, they finally captured the young man that they say is guilty of the shooting at his parents' one point something million dollar home. Mm. And it, it just asks you to think through what is leading to the violence that we're seeing. Right. Because yeah. It's because you grew up poor, you grew up black, you grew up in a certain neighborhood. And, and these are all preliminary findings, mm. but it's still making you ask questions. Then on the other hand, and this is completely different on defying stereotypes, uh, the winner of the uh, NBA slam duck contest. That's right. Was relatively short, about six foot two, um, marginal player for the Philadelphia 76ers yep. named mm-hmm. Mac McClung, who's white. Mm-hmm. And everybody kept adjusting the color on their televisions <laughs> as they watched this young man sky. Over two people. Over two people, you know, throwing, yeah. their, you know, while they slowly burned their video uh, uh, copies of White Men Can't Jump in the fireplace. <laughs> I mean, we are at a point where we have to get rid of stereotypes. And yes. start Absolutely. People people. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And and such would that, that would apply also to the black police officers that are currently being charged with in uh, Memphis. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. You know, um, what that clearly says to me again is that evil is no respecter of persons. Yeah, it's, right. it, it's spiritual, and, and spirit is not defined by physicality. And, you know, so. Yeah. Well, that's true. That's true. All right. Enough for uh, that sobering news <laughs> recap. Uh, well, we know that we are still in the month of February. And so it is still Black History Month. We always say, oh, it's the shortest month of the year. But we still want to um, take some time to celebrate um, this important month. Um, Of course, it's something we feel should be um, applauded all year long. Black excellence doesn't just happen in the month of February. Mm -hmm. We're doing great things all year round. And so um, we thought that it would be kind of cool to look at some of what we're calling our new first, meaning some of the first um, black individuals who are accomplishing things. Um, You know, and it's it's funny, it actually becomes more notable the longer it takes for them to become the first, you know, the first in 1960 is not the same as the first in 2023 or 2022, because it actually took that long for the, for them to become the first. But uh, fortunately we're seeing a lot more first happening, um, in this last decade, which is an encouraging thing, because um, as you were talking about stereotypes, there are a lot of stereotypes that are being broken by the accomplishments of Black people in certain roles. And so um, some of the people we're going to talk about tonight, um, you may be familiar with because they've been in the news. Some of them may be less familiar to you. um, But as you're listening to us kind of go through a few of these individuals, Uh, Feel free, as you always do, to share additional information that you know about the person. But we would like to know at the end of the show, um, someone that stood out to you. 
um, which which person that we talked about tonight stood out to you? And then tell us why. I think it's important. The whole reason of us even discussing these individuals is to inspire. Um, we have a whole generation of people behind us, you know, our young people, our old children, that we want to be able to see these faces and also see that they can accomplish these things. And that's the importance, I think, for us to be able to highlight Black excellence. Um, because when we see people doing things, then we know we can accomplish them as well. All right. So, um, you know, this is going to kind of be like a little round robin of some of us highlighting some of the first and kind of sharing some information um, that we know about the person. And uh, like I said, we invite the audience to chime in uh, with any comments you have. I mean, this is not a lecture by any chance, <laughs> any stretch of the imagination, but just some sharing we wanted to do um, to highlight some people we think um, deserve um, some accolades here. So I'm actually going to start. I'm going to start with the first person. Um, and this is no stranger uh, to us. This is Maya Angelou. Um, we are very familiar with Maya Angelou and um, how much she has been um, appreciated for her poetry. Uh, we know that uh, she was a dancer in her younger years, um, but she's also the first black woman to be featured on a United States quarter. Now, and this is not to take anything away from her. Um, <laughs> she is on the back. George Washington is still on the quarter. <laughs> just, just so we know. She, George Washington is still on the front of the quarter. But am I frozen? Like, I feel like. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> okay, well, just bear with me till everything jumps back in. But you can still hear me, so I'm going to keep going. Yeah. Um, on January the 10th, 2022, um, she, <laughs> it was released that she was going to be on this quarter and, and it actually came about because of Congresswoman Barbara Lee. Um, she is the one who, um, fought for this bill because she felt like phenomenal women who have shaped American history have gone unrecognized for so long, uh, particularly women of color that she thought that Maya Angelou deserved to be on the back of this coin. So, um, as an author and an activist and the first black woman to appear in this quarter, you see that, and I think you can see it in the picture here, that she is on the tail side and her figure is standing there um, in front of a bird silhouette, uh, which is a nod to um, one of her uh, infamous works. So it's kind of kind of great to see when we get when we get on money, you know, that means something. Right. Isn't that a big thing? When, it is. It when is. we get on money, that's that, that says a lot. You're on there with a president. Of the United States, so mm -hmm. shout I mean, out. Yeah. Good thing is they put on a quarter because if they put on the, the next coin, they would have said she's only worth a dime. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Marlena, I'm sorry. I can't believe I'm still frozen. Okay, you know what? <laughs> Marlena is the first black woman to come in after the start. Are <laughs> we following like you, Tally? <laughs> you like you so much. Oh. When 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 was that coin minted again? When was it? January the 10th, 2022. I see. Okay. And the interesting thing about it is the same that in 1999, I guess they launched this 50 state um, coin program. You guys remember that when everybody was trying to get a quarter that had the states on there? Yep. Uh, and they were saying that that was mm -hmm. some of the, that was one of the biggest heights of mm. coin collectors like that, you know, that year, 1999. But the second one was actually in 2022 when Maya Angelou came on the quarter. So um, she actually uh, made a big difference there. I'm going to stop my camera. Somewhere. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> well, you know, Sorry. just to, to add to that, and it, it has been somewhat disputed by some historians, but uh, for years, it was believed that Maya Angelou was the first uh, black conductor of a San Francisco streetcar, cable mm. car. Um, mm. And this would have been around 1944. There's some who say that there might have been someone earlier, but at the very least, she would be the first woman. And so she drove a streetcar. I believe it was named Desire. And uh, she might have been the first. Are you serious? She was the first streetcar. Yeah, I mean th that was the claim in the book. I know why the Cage okay. Bird sings. Okay. okay, she made the claim, mm -hmm. but it, it's it's, it's been it's been that. repeated uh, more than once. Gotcha. 
It's nice to see Tasha alive and well again. Right. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what that was about, but anyway, we move on. All right, uh, Pat. That's me. Tell us, tell us about one of the first you want to highlight. We'll we'll go to to that person. I, um, I, Tia Norfleet is <laughs> is is, you know, Tally. I don't know Tally. Tia Norfleet, and why? I, there's one thing I was never able to understand: uh, uh, race car driving. I just <laughs> I just felt like you know. I remember Richard Petty. I remember um, I just all say the it. I, say it. Dale Earnhardt. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, into this. All of Absolutely. And um, but I never knew, and and I think we all should learn how to do h- how it works because I think you get points per um, mm-hmm. uh, per race or something like that. Right. Um, right. But she was the first and only African American woman to hold a NASCAR driver's license. Mm. Very and nice. uh, her mm-hmm. father was uh, his name is Bobby Norfleet, who mm-hmm. is a race car driver. Like okay. car driver, but uh, she um, she started driving from the time that she was 12, 14 years uh, and fourteen years old, and um, and um, she hasn't completed any races, but she's recognized. And I just wanted the crew to know that we have a black woman who gets behind the wheel and step on the gas yeah. and then Marlena in, you know, um, in traffic. <laughs> but, you know, with that pose that, oh boy, I might get in trouble saying this, but it's all right. We're that at- is, that is the pose of a black female driver period hmm. <laughs> that says, get the blank out of my way. <laughs> right. Right. Before I run you over. I mean, I mean, look at a, look at her uniform it impact. You know, yeah, yeah. But I celebrate that. I I've always felt. In fact, I my feelings about NASCAR has grown a little colder over the most recent years because I've always felt that even while NASCAR had a black vice president, hmm. okay, NASCAR right. black vice president, they could not seem to get many black, uh, let alone females, uh, in in the championship circuit you know because nascar has several levels yeah, right but um but bubba wallace now is is a notable black driver in the the top tier nascar but you know i just felt that they could have done better and should do better with that mm. because we have some outstanding black drivers out there yep um and it's good to know that tia is uh, who knows maybe we'll see her in the daytona 500 one day yep i know yep. we we'll talk know about that. Defying stereotypes, you know, we know NASCAR is not only a mm-hmm. predominantly male, um, it's good old boy, white male, um, right? sport. So she's mm-hmm. actually double. double well, it's good here. to know that there's a young black lady for whom, when they say she's a fast woman, that is actually <laughs> literally true. Yeah, a compliment, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, those cars go up to two and 220, 230 miles an hour. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, you, you know, look, you. You, if you ever take a ride in a, a race car like that with someone, it trust me, your your underwear will be bound for the Smithsonian by the time you're done. It, it will really test you. Somehow I knew that was me. Uh, moving on now. <laughs> GP, let's let's hear one of your your first. Sure, uh, one of my first uh, say African American heroes is uh, Reverend Doctor Raphael Warnock. Yeah, so my God. My for God. over 16 years, Reverend Warnock has served as the senior pastor of the Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta. And he actually became the youngest pastor to serve in that historic church. And so he made history uh, almost two decades ago. However, most recently, after an intense, uh, grueling campaign, yes, sir. Uh, he raised. Two hundred million dollars, like one of the most expensive campaigns in Georgia, two hundred million dollars. And he ended up winning the runoff to become the first black senator of the state of Georgia. And so he's also the first Democrat to represent a southern state in the Senate. So he has made history three times over. So Mm -hmm. shout out to Reverend 
the good Reverend mm. Doctor Warner. Right. I agree. The good yes. Reverend. Very, very impressive. Yes. yes. And I want to thank I Latasha see. for the for the Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, you saw um, that. <laughs> effect. Like, hey. Yeah, I was getting a little dizzy there. But <laughs> thank you for that. Yes. He's the first. Where will she stop? First. Where will she stop next? Exactly. <laughs> the Wheel of Wonder. The Wheel of Wonder. Uh, Ralph Warnock was just here in Philadelphia. Oh, speaking right. for speaking for Corey Johnson's uh, father-in-law. Nice. Uh, oh, he used to, he used to spend, yeah, he used to spend quite a bit of time up here. I met him first when uh, he was speaking for a good friend of mine, uh, uh, Doctor Damon Jones, over at the Bible Way Temple. And nobody would have at that point the idea of him being a senator was about as likely as a cat going to be fitted for pajamas. <laughs> but he, he he came through. I mean, and uh, it's just amazing to see it. Yeah. 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 Uh, Tally, you have to remember that many of us have very photographic minds. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I'm picturing a cat in the particular. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> My daddy used to say that. <laughs> Uses it. All right. All right. We're moving right along with our first. I'm learning. I'm learning a little bit more about some of the people I knew were first for one thing, but um, mm. understand there's even more to them. All right. Marlena. All right. <laughs> so let's talk about Keychant Sewell. Yeah, she goes. She's flipping through. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Close my eye. <laughs> Yeah, right. Anthony, right. Anthony right. Daniels. Right. Anthony Daniels said he had to take some drama. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. There we go. Scroll. I have to tap. Okay, all right, I get it. He <laughs> chant school was born April second, nineteen seventy two. I want you to know because she's a young woman, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Young girl power. We're doing stuff. She's an American police officer. What, what's this weeping? <laughs> right. Young black women, we doing stuff. Alive. That's right. That's oh, right. Okay. Yeah, well, keep That's right, Marina. <laughs> She's an American police officer and administrator who is currently serving as the 45th New York City Police Commissioner, the first woman to serve in this position. She was appointed by Eric Adams, yep. and she started her. Um, office in September of 2020. Now, this is one thing I want to share with you is that she was just promoted through the ranks for many things that she had done, right? But now she is, um, she also served in the FBI. Um, she was in an F in FBI National Academy, but she oversees 35,000 reform officers and 18,000 civilians. Awesome. And I wow. just wanted to give a shout out to her for doing excellent things and being the uh, police officer of New York City. Mm -hmm. That's right. Wow. Yeah, good yeah. stuff. You good know, stuff. and a lot in a lot of those crime dramas we see on TV now, you notice a lot of the women um are in these leadership roles. So I feel like, you know, this is kind of there's been a wave of women being appointed uh, as police commissioners in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. We have commissioner outlaw. Uh, she's the first female commissioner uh, selected. Um, and then in, in Memphis, of course, there's commissioner CJ Davis who came out of, I believe out of Atlanta and there are quite a few others. And these are all women of color. And so there's, there's a new wave of, of black women moving up the ranks to become leaders of of law de uh, law enforcement um, departments, and we love to see it. That's we right. <laughs> until yeah. until they're in a car with red lights on behind your vehicle, <laughs> yeah, showing no mercy. Yeah, <laughs> seeing these young black women like like, like our friend Marlena. That's right. Yeah. We like the girl power. That's yeah. right. <laughs> All right. Speaking of moving up the ranks, I'm, I'm going to go to my next person here. Um, and that is Lorna Maylock. Mm. I mean, you've heard of her. Anyone heard of her? Lorna have not. Mm. Her mm. uniform there. Mm hmm. I find it. <laughs> <laughs> well, on December the 6th, and I believe this was the last year, um, President Joe Biden appointed her uh, as the first black female two-star general. And she is the deputy director for cybersecurity for combat support at the National Security Agency. 
in Fort Meade, Maryland. Now, Lorna was actually born in Jamaica, but she immigrated, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> she immigrated to Brooklyn, New York. Pat, you know a little something about Brooklyn. Um, when she was 17 years old, and that was in 1985. And it's about three months after she got there to Brooklyn, she um, joined the Marine Corps. And so she pretty much, you know, that's how she started her career. And she has served in several capacities, such as the Marine Corps Chief Information Officer, the Director of Command, Control, Communication, and Computers. So she is no stranger to kind of being in charge and knowing what to do. Um, So one thing about the Marine Corps, for those who don't understand why this is such a big deal, is um, the Marine Corps is actually one of the smallest military branches and Very it unlikely. also has the lowest percentage of women yep. among its troops at 9%. Mm-hmm. So you're already a minority in the Marine Corps, but yet you uh, reach the status of two-star general. And so we're so proud of her um, and congratulate well, her. You know, as I know, the military, uh, in terms of their ranking and what have you, um, the Marine Corps, um, they're, they're pretty sharp people. Um, very educated, um, kind of the elite. And during battle, um, which I hate battle in any circumstance, but generally the the Marine Corps are the first ones to, mm-hmm. first ones in uh, mm-hmm. because of their uh, specialty and their elitism. Um, so I, you know, it, it's it's amazing and, and wonderful to have a black female who would be a part of all of those logistics. Um, Absolutely. When you talk her. about chief information officer, that, that's right. a big deal. Yes. Right. That's, that's, that's business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's commendable. Yeah, and, and the other thing Indeed. too is all, only three women in the uh, Marine Corps history have picked up the rank of lieutenant general and all mm. of them are retired. So wow. mm. uh, she, she I just is, wish those, uh, those government photographers could have taken a better picture <laughs> have to be serious he can't be smile serious, right? two, two star general can be nice they just <laughs> smile when they kick you around see that many smiling, though, charles, charles <laughs> wanted to see a picture of her doing like this <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. jillian smith hines who is a proud jamaican <laughs> made note of the fact that jamaicans seem to do well everywhere she from, she from your church? She's she from, your... from West Church. She yeah, 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 yeah. Learn she, she, well, she looks like she's saying, you talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something, Charles. As the pastor of West Philadelphia Church, I have seen that look a whole lot of times. <laughs> and it was normally accompanied by that expression. <laughs> but, you know, on the grand scheme of things, it really makes you proud. And it shows that um, intelligence and brilliance that's right. Does not have a color. Yeah. That's right. That's or right. or a gender. Yep. Right. But right. I will tell you, you, you know, not to be stereotypical, but there is a resilience and a strength to the women that I have met from Jamaica that is is laudable. I mean, there's a real resilience and a strength there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm come a long way. There you do. I like that. <laughs> okay. Well said, Daniel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what are you doing? You <laughs> on the job. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> so you guys know, this is a sidebar. I I know what people are gonna say when I say this, but I love crunching on ice. Yeah. And I know my iron's low. I know that. Like, don't. <laughs> it's just a thing. So I'm team. sorry. You gotta watch out for you. I have right. well, more. That's- Ice. Let's so, all get cups of ice. Yeah, well, we'll crunch together. I, thought, I, I thought it was tea that she normally was drinking or something yeah. hot. All of a sudden, I heard something crunching in my ear. I was like, Whoa. "That is uh, Lorna. Lorna is mad about something." <laughs> Sorry. It, it, well, it's it's ice, ice, Sorry, baby. Yes. <laughs> okay, uh, spin that wheel. I see you next. GP, I'm just going to go to you because. Sure, <laughs> sure. Uh, my next person is where, where, Kamala where? Harris. Kamala what? Harris. Okay. All so right. Kamala Harris is originally from Oaktown, a.k.a. Oakland, California. Mm-hmm. And oh, she spent you... the first two. Well, that's where she grew up. But she is uh, half black and half Indian. 
Uh, she spent the better part of two decades of her life serving in the public sector. Now, she was the first black woman to be elected district attorney in California. Mm -hmm. All right. And yep. then she became the first woman to be the attorney attorney general for the state of California. Mm -hmm. And now she is the first black woman and the first Asian American serving as the vice president of the U.S. of A. And so she has a track record of making history, blazing trails and breaking records. And so shout out to Kamala Harris. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yay. Very proud. <clears throat> if I might wave the flag a little bit, I've had the privilege of interviewing her twice. Really? Wow. When, Live when she, or when she virtual. wrote the a book called Smart on Crime uh, that was an excellent book on on how we could approach crime and, and criminality from a different perspective. And most recently, a couple of months ago, I had the opportunity to interview her as the vice president. And so it's very uh, good. Very gracious right. woman. Very, you know, very gracious woman. We'll yeah. have to get that clip and share that. Uh, I can get it for you. Okay. Right. Y'all awesome. done activated the doctors online and <laughs> activated the Jamaicans online. Or <laughs> anybody named Olive is a Jamaican. I don't care how you. How you <laughs> all Jamaicans. Are, next thing we have a pansy on here and some flower name <laughs> on here. <laughs> That's excellent. But no, you know, one other thing about Kamala, though, Kamala Harris. Um, I think it's so important. We talk about representation, but for little girls to be able to see someone in the highest office, you know, wor working alongside the president shows them what they can accomplish. That's something they've never been able to No one in my lifetime, um, you know, as a, a child, I, I never saw that. So I didn't even imagine that. I didn't even dream about that. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's such a big statement to have her in that particular office that you can actually help run the country um, as a black woman. <laughs> that's, that's to our benefit because you, you know, I mean, you would have been vice president somewhere rather than serving us as communications director. <laughs> had you known <laughs> all of the things that you can do. Right? It's, it's not too late. She can still be president. <laughs> of Allegheny East? Not in the United States, right? I got a lot of making up to do it. All right, so we're gonna keep moving. Um, Pat, we're gonna go to your next person. I think I. Oh come on! I mean, I'm all over the place. So where, where we going? Uh, Hollywood Squares. <laughs> Lillian, what about Lillian? Lillian, yeah. Lillian is good. Lillian is good. Um, now my timing is off because I tried to keep them close in the decade, but it doesn't matter. I was as I was reading through it, I was extra, extra, extra proud of her, who um, was the first. African American female to hold the rank of rear admiral in the United States Navy. Um, nice. You have to be appointed, of course, with that by the president of the United States. And uh, she's from Maryland. She's from Maryland, worked her way through Maryland, Rockville, right. Marion, Maryland area, and um, and got commissioned out in Rhode Island. Uh, went to Lincoln University in. Pen, no, it's not Philly, it's Pennsylvania, in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, her duties as a legal officer, uh, she was springboarded to uh, Rear Admiral. So it's good to see that. And it's funny, just like the uh, the one that Natasha was dealing with, what's her name? Lorna Mela. Yeah, she came through. Her commands was with a naval computer uh, telecommunications area. And... Mm -hmm. um, Hmm, and all the trend. Yep. Okay. Yeah, they all mm -hmm. came that way. So, like everybody's coming through communications, mm -hmm. and then after communications, you know, you change the constitution, and then they become president. <laughs> <laughs> Tally, you ain't listening, Tally. I thought I had you on that. No, you have no. I, <laughs> <laughs> I was I'm very, proud, very proud of her. I'm um, listening I, to your last show here. Just, <laughs> 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 last show. So, Chuck, I, I really wish that they. Um, she has a little smirk, you know, a little smile. Mm -hmm. So we need to change the photography yeah. for the most. This yeah. is probably an older picture. Maybe they smiled a little more back then. Yeah. Yeah. You should use a uh, 
<laughs> higher resolution lens next time. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm <laughs> all about it. But I am proud. I'm proud to know that rear admiral in the navy. The navy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, Lillian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. All right, let's keep it moving with this wheel here. Oh, okay, sorry. Sorry not to scare you guys. All right, Marlena, tell us about Jennifer All King. Right. More girl power. Jennifer oh, King, born, born August 6th, 1984, <laughs> is an American football coach who is the assistant running backs coach for the Washington Commanders. All right. The National Football League. Mm-hmm. And when I was studying about her, it, I mean, just listening to her history, she is a former <clears throat> two-sport athlete at Guilford College, where she played basketball and softball. But listen to this. She, she's from North Carolina, Eden, North Carolina. Mm-hmm. And while she was at Guilford College, right, she obtained her degree in sports management. 2006. Mm-hmm. She was a part of the Women's Football Alliance. Sorry, I got Jemma paid. <laughs> <laughs> Where she was a quarterback and wide receiver for the <clears throat> Carolina Phoenix team from 2006 <clears throat> to 2017. She was a defensive back and wide receiver for the New York Sharks in 2018 mm-hmm. and the safety position for the DC Divas in 2019. <clears throat> All right. They won the um, DC Divas uh, or the Sharks are the Sharks won the 2018 WFA division two championship. She was a part of that. Mm-hmm. And then she received a, a degree from Liberty university with a master's degree in sports management. She okay. is the first black female to do assistant coaching in the NFL. Wow. Well, let me well, well, certainly this wasn't flag football. No, 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 no. Yeah. So she played those positions. Yeah. yeah. Women's league, yeah. It's amazing mm. she had enough brain power left to to get that education. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's that's another show right there. Yeah. yeah. The of- as much as I love football, I love my Eagles. It is a brutally it is. Oh yes, it is. Violent game. So, yeah. Yeah. on the other hand, her ac- her uh, academic uh, achievements are well worth the noting so she's not only an athlete but she's an academic as well so yeah. kudos right. to jennifer and the interesting thing is uh just because you can play the game doesn't mean that you can coach the coach game it. there That's you go right. there are some right. coaches who are the best at what they do but they mm-hmm. can't play a lick mm-hmm. wow. for her to be able to play and coach is truly impressive good. yes it is good stuff good wow. so when they when they ask me to to be a, a preaching coach to some people. That's because you suck. I was wondering about that. I was wondering. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Jennifer King is actually a nice segue into um, my next person, which is Maya Shaka. Have you guys heard of Maya Shaka? She yeah. was um, Seen her. <laughs> NFL's first black female referee. Uh, well, mm. you know, she was she officiated in an NFL game. Um, and, you know, when she's talking about this, she was just saying how it was a privilege um, for her to be able to represent women and women of color in one of the most popular sports in America. This is her just kind of reflecting on what that moment was like. And for those who uh, may be familiar with the game where she did this, it was the New York Jets um, versus the Carolina Panthers. And the game took place mm. in Charlotte, North Carolina. And she's actually the third on-field female official in the NFL Um in addition to her, there was Sarah Thomas, um, who was the first permanent female game official, and Shannon Easton, who was the first woman to officiate in an NFL game. Um, but <clears throat> one of the things about Shaka is that, you know, a lot of times people wonder what's the course to get to to, to that point. But she served um, serves as a health and physical education teacher, and she spent mm-hmm. time as a referee for the 
NCAA um, yeah. conference. Okay. And um, she also had a short lived, uh, she was in the Alliance of American Football in 2019. Uh, but then she entered the NFL's officiating development program in 2014. So, d- who, who knew that existed? I mean, I guess only those mm. who want to get into that. It's a program that you right. actually have to um, go through to be considered. Um, and, and what it does is it offers top officiating prospects in the collegiate ranks. So, you know, because she was working with the NCAA, um, it gave her in- exposure to in-game experience, which then qualified her to be able to do what she was able to do. So um, it's really... Um, a great accomplishment for her and also a trailblazer for other women, mm. particularly women of color who may be interested in pursuing something um, that you don't really see a lot of women yeah. doing. So I would love to see a play, a play where she pulls the yellow flag and a player doesn't like the idea that mm. they've been called and see them confront her about that. Mm. Mm. No, I'm I'm serious because you, you know how players can you know they get angry because oh you know they feel oh, yeah. it wasn't pass interference wasn't pass interference what are you doing or even coaches, um but can you see a coach coming up to her three inches from her face and yelling at her? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I, I was just, just imagining a coach coming up to her and and ready to just light into her and say, uh, never mind. Yeah, yeah. She'd, she'd make she'd have that Tia Norfleet pose that you spoke of earlier. <laughs> yeah. but, is, is there any truth, uh, uh, Tasha, that she married uh, Louis Kahn? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I, mean, I heard she was Maya Chaka Khan now. Nope. <laughs> nope. I knew that was coming. I, you know, I, I did not see that. Well, why do I? And the reason why, Latasha, is because is you, no, you you were chewing the ice. <laughs> and he didn't know. He, you didn't hear the brain beginning. freeze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't hear the beginning of where he was coming from. Is there any truth? Okay, all right. I got it. But I would hate. I let's flip that. I for the amount of uh, black people who are on the field at the time, I would hope that no one approach her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that kind of well, way. Like, yeah, it, it's it is it is a tough job because sometimes they have field of view that even the television cameras don't have. That's true. Oh yeah, and she has to call it the way she sees it. Sure, yeah. you know, like and it or not. It yeah, yeah. All right, let's keep it moving. Let's <laughs> spin our little wheel here. See who we have next. The wheel of heroes. You want to stop at Cheryl Boone real quick? Sure. We want to do Cheryl Boone is. Um, it should be motion first, picture. Sorry about that. First black president. Yeah. Mo- <laughs> <laughs> Not motion yeah. pictures. No, no, it's it, it's fine. She's the first uh, black president at the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Science. Um, mm-hmm. She's also a filmmaker. Um, I, uh, she was, she was responsible. Wish I was reading it. Would have been better. Uh, she's responsible for opening up the cap of the membership of the of the Academy of Motion Pictures in order for more people in diversity to start to uh, to choose, yes, you know, actors, et cetera, in each. So um, she's out of San Francisco. Um, um, she's uh, worked in the publicity communication side of uh, Columbia Pictures and and uh, directed and promoted uh, in Paramount Pictures, so she was among the the um, the major uh, motion pictures, and just uh, and basically worked her way to the to the Academy, where they elected her twice now to be the president. Nice, mm-hmm. yes, that's a lot. wow, never knew that. Yeah, and we definitely need representation there, um, and so and that's one of the reasons why it's important. Um, for people of color to be in leadership roles because we're sensitive to the lack of diversity that we see in certain places and we can make changes that sometimes our counterparts don't even realize or maybe turn a blind eye to. So shout out to Cheryl. Cheryl, You know, I, I I may want to insert that uh, and and this might, might be another show, but if you follow a lot of musicians, especially jazz musicians, 
uh, black jazz mu musicians, male and female. Um, the, many of their stories say that they do much better in foreign countries than in the United States. Mm. Um, many of them go to Paris or Germany where their music is loved and they're treated fairly, but, you know, especially the, the pioneers here in the United States of early jazz music, they, um, you know, they, uh, they just don't get the recognition in the States. Um, but the one thing I can say about Cheryl Boone is a good, it's good that she is a professional in the field. Right. Uh, who better can judge other people's work than someone who knows how it works. Right. Yep. Who's right. been through the whole process. Yep. Shout out. All right. We're going to someone that for those who watch the Super Bowl. You are the next. Uh oh. The prize Bad gal Riri. All right. Cool. <laughs> if you watch the so, halftime. Uh, Rihanna is known worldwide for her chart topping hit songs like Oh Na Na, What's My Name? Um, by the way, in case you didn't know her name, it is Robin Rihanna oh. Fenty. That's mm. right. Her and name is Robin Rihanna name Robin. Yeah. Fenty. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but it wasn't her music that made her successful because the reality is um, she is successful as a musician, as a singer, as a performer. But the bulk of her fortune comes from the value of Fenty Beauty. That's right. Mm -hmm. Fenty Beauty, which she founded in 2017. Uh, she sought to create a cosmetic company that made women everywhere feel included. So mm -hmm. the products from the Fenty line come in a diverse range of colors. And it includes harder to find darker shades for mm -hmm. women of color. Where and her also, products sold. Yes. Also, her models that display her products are also equally diverse. And so mm -hmm. Rihanna not only created a product, but she met a need. Mm -hmm. She met a need. And as a result, mm -hmm. um, she is now worth $1.7 billion from her <laughs> cosmetic line alone. Not wow. only ventures like her... Um, her um, there's a apparel line for, I guess, underwear or other things that she sells. That's a whole different number. But just the cosmetics alone, she's worth $1.7 billion without mm. any of her songs or music. So that's commendable that she filled that need. And uh, like they say, the riches are in the niches. So <laughs> she found her. <laughs> yeah, the riches are in the niches. There's one of those. Yeah. And so Hold you on. asked Marlena where where. It's so I mean, sold. Yeah. She's in, in all like the major cosmetics. She's in Sephora, Ulta mm. Beauty. I'm sure, of course, her online store. But um, yeah, I've heard great things about yeah. her. Just go to her website, Google her name, yeah. go to her website, and you can shop right there. So you're saying, are you saying that we are now promoting um cosmetics for the pastor? Oh, I'm just. I was I'm, thinking Tosh and I can do a little side thing. Which, which red is your red? <laughs> we can go into cosmetics, you know, oh, like yeah, right? cosmetic for the Adventist population. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the next to mm. invisible cosmetic. Mm. <laughs> we call it pure beauty. I, 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 I read, now, wasn't there a time when Adventists didn't wear makeup? Absolutely, there was a time. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I grew up with them, like, <laughs> like, Bring here. back the days of yay or nay. <laughs> we complain, Do you really want to bring back those days, Tally? <laughs> you know what? I'll be I'll be really honest with you. When I joined the I joined the church as just about sixteen, and then when I went away to Oakwood, I had never seen beauty that was so natural, and uh, it was exquisite mm -hmm. to me. I remember that very right. well. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. you know. uh, yeah, Benjamin said, "Man, Pat, the '90s SDA conservative in me definitely wondered what's being promoted here." <laughs> Listen, mm -hmm. you can say what you want about Rihanna, but she is a business woman who That's is right. killing the game, and she ought to be celebrated. GP, not just that, man. He's wondering if we're gonna we want to send our kids to 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 the army, to the navy. Uh, we, we, we're pushing the armed forces. Nah, Benjamin, we good, man. We just doing the first. 
first, first blacks. Yeah, like Tiffany said, yeah, some people need it. But <laughs> oh wow. Some people <laughs> need it. Wow. And I think it's important, you know, and of course we'll summarize it at the end, but it's not necessarily what the people we're highlighting have, have done more so than them finding their passion or something that they love and, and working hard at it and getting yep. to the top. I yep. mean, and so that can be different things for different people. It, it means that whatever you're doing right now, you can be number one or you can get to a point where you can become the first and you can, you know, I mean, that's, you know, we're not saying to emulate anybody on here. Let's, let's put that disclaimer right. out here, but find your thing and do it big. I mean, yeah. that's make tough. the best bourbon that you can. <laughs> Is that your and thing? Especially, Tosh, Taj, if, if I can just add, you know, being yeah. African American, oftentimes the things that we do are not promoted high. You know, you, no. you don't get recognition and we don't know about many of them and that's why this show is so great just to point out what people have done because I didn't know many of these people you know until you know tonight's show and and I think it's great to celebrate what mm-hmm. other uh, achievements others have made and you could be the next first African American to that's do right. something large and that's so right. we want to celebrate you too that's right that's right, that's right. I believe and- that we do have um one more Marlena. Uh well a couple more, but um sorry, lost control of my mouth again. So you missed my guy. Yes, yes. <laughs> I too had the pleasure of meeting this guy, Wes Moore. I'm mm. trying to be like Tally. However, it was only on the television. Oh, sorry. But I mean <laughs> <laughs> I met him when he was running, right? Only well, he time. doesn't have a cosmetic brand. I'm That's sorry. I was trying to figure out. <laughs> oh, his, wow. yeah, his, I was gonna as say, they say, his, face, his face looks beat. Yeah. Uh, I, I was going to say that he and he and Rihanna could talk about a typo, right? Oh, Two billion dollars. <laughs> right. right. Well, he married. is not into cosmetics, but I think who he really is, all right? Yeah, just look at his face. Born um, in 1978, so he's a very young man. He is an American oh, politician, nice. investment banker, is a history of um, an author. He wrote many, many books, television producer, and a nonprofit executive. Um, and is currently now serving as the 63rd governor of Maryland. Mm-hmm. He was elected in 2023. He is a member of the Democratic Party, and he is the third Black person to be elected as governor of any United States. Mm-hmm. As of 2023, the only incumbent he served prior as the lieutenant governor just recently. <sighs> Um, he is the fifth American U.S. state governor overall. Um, as you know, uh, I think there were only four black governors prior to him. And one was Douglas Wilder of Virginia. When I lived, mm-hmm. I had the pleasure of meeting that young man. But I just want to celebrate Wes being a young man in his 40s who is now only the fifth governor in the U.S. history as a, a black male. So we celebrate him right there in Maryland. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shout yeah. out. I have a question for, for Nick Taliaferro because I know he works in politics and talks to a lot of these folks. Why do we see so few governors, but so many black mayors? Why is that? Because uh, black populations centered in urban settings, whereas, you know, statewide, you typically take in a larger ex-urban and rural population that might be less likely to be supportive of having a black person to serve as their leader. So, uh, so, so Tally, like, can you put that into English for me? Yeah, so? I mean, you, you, for example, you go to a city, you see black people congregated in cities. That's okay, where jobs well, yeah. were, housing okay. was cheap. Okay. And, and so people, black people were in, Philadelphia has the, the largest segment of Philadelphia population is black. Uh, Washington, Mm -hmm. D.C. at one time was almost 70 percent black, Baltimore, majority black. And so it's easier for a black person to gain traction with a a larger black population, whereas statewide you take in larger rural communities and ex-urban communities that are white that are less likely to be willing to to find it possible to support a black person in office. So this is a big feat then for him to be able to win. Oh yeah, in, in oh, yeah, and yeah, in Maryland. In Maryland? Oh no. yeah. Mm-hmm. Now Maryland is a lot more progressive until you start going out west. You know where Hagerstown is. Didn't we used to have an office there? But 
you know, it's it's <laughs> it's a lot lot. Uh, you know, you got Baltimore, and then you have you know the D.C. suburbs on the south end, and so. And then you have the Eastern Shore of Maryland. People don't don't remember that. The Eastern yep. Shore of Maryland is Mississippi. That's right. Yep. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. That's where, yeah. that's where the Sojourner Truth thing, that's, that's their escape route. Wow. Harriet, Harriet Tubman came Harriet, out of I'm the sorry, Eastern Harriet Shore. Tubman, not Sojourner Truth. Harriet Tubman. Wow. That's the escape route. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Shout out to Wes Moore. Yes, and yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, I can't I want to see this typo anymore. Yeah. Okay, um, we're going to move to someone that Charles wanted to highlight for us. And uh, oh yeah, well, you know, I didn't quite hold to the assignment because <laughs> Aura Washington uh, was a first many years ago. Um, but I've come full circle on her. I know last last year when we did. Um, you know, dedications during uh, Black History Month. I mentioned Aura, mm -hmm. just kind of in passing almost. I, I felt even when I mentioned her then, I, I could have talked a little bit more about her. But just recently, a couple of weeks ago, uh, the British Broadcasting Corporation did a special show on Aura Washington, which I thought was really interesting. Here's the BBC that pulls this name out and, and spotlights her. So, you know, I just f felt that, you know, I could come full circle and bring her back to our thoughts. Um, she has a fascinating career. Uh, she was the first black star in women's sports in the United that the United States has ever known. Reason being is she was a champion in uh, tennis and in basketball. Mm -hmm. An amazing athlete. Um, some of the things that were printed about her, one, one quote from the Pittsburgh Cour Courier said that she, was, she has stamina and speed that make many male players blush with envy. <laughs> she was uh, uh, amazing. Um, she, was the f she was the fifth of nine children, okay, of James and, and Laura Young of Washington, who owned a farm in a small town in um, and file. I've never heard of a town like that. About midway between Richmond and Washington, um, she she moved from the segregated South to Philadelphia, mm. uh, where she picked up tennis at the YMCA mm. in Germantown section of oh, Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Germantown. Um, she was a natural, um, and after moving to Chicago, where she worked at a, as a hotel maid. Washington won her first national singles title in 1929. And for seven straight years, there was no stopping her. Hmm. Her superiority, superiority is so evident. Uh, there was a black uh, paper in New York uh, that said that uh, her competitors are frequently beaten before the first ball crossed the net. Oh, wow. Uh, this lady too. was amazing. Um, now here's, you know, here's a little sad note about her. Um, yeah. She was inducted into the Black Athletes Hall of Fame in 1976. Mm -hmm. And the organizers were surprised that she did not show up for the ceremony. And the reason for that is they were even more surprised to learn that she had died five <gasps> years earlier. Stop oh, it. Wow. In 1971 in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, however, uh, it ends on a good note. Washington was included in, inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame in Springfield, Massachusetts in 2018, partly through the efforts of Claude Johnson, the executive director of, of um, uh, the Black Fives Foundation. So it has a happy ending to some extent. Um, mm -hmm. But I just thought it was interesting. She was a private person, very private. She didn't like a lot of spotlight. She didn't like a lot of celebrities. So she was very, very quiet. Outstanding athlete in both sports. Um, but because I, I just thought it was shocking that here you're having, you know, you're inducting her in the Black Athletes Hall of Fame, and they didn't even know that she yeah. died five years prior. Five, five years? Ago. I mean, that a few months, a year, okay, but five years? Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, embarrassingly, I mean, as a Philadelphian, I I remember faintly perhaps hearing the name, but I knew nothing about her. 
So Charles, mm -hmm. I stand educated on that one. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And then I was, you know, I listened to the BBC uh, daily just to hear their spin on stories. And when it came up in in one of their reports on their podcast that they were going to highlight her, I, I felt really good about that because otherwise she probably would be forgotten. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Wow. Mm. <laughs> Yes, yes. Thank you for bringing her back around to us, Charles. Um, because I like you, like has been said, we didn't, I didn't know of her. Um, but it seems like she was the Serena Williams of her time yeah. in terms of, you know, um, being yeah. a strong female athlete. So, or watch and from Germantown. So that's even right. Yeah. That, that kind of oh, made it special nice. too. Brought it home to Philadelphia. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, awesome, awesome. All right, so we've covered quite a few um, individuals, notable individuals, um, and and the thing is, the list is so much longer. There's so many people um, that we didn't cover tonight. Um, oh, Anthony Daniels had a question, Charles. If if there's um, archived, have you seen some archived video of her playing tennis? You know, I haven't. And when I was preparing for the show, I didn't have enough time to really check that. But there's got to be something out there of uh, some footage of her um they you know there there are reports uh that she was just an outstanding player like for instance uh, one one um sports writer said that um uh, what was it that oh that she could pass and shoot with either hand mm. Mm. ambidextrous uh, yeah <laughs> yeah so that that said something special about her her abilities just uh i i just yeah. you know i just thought that it was it was out an outstanding story and and, and, yeah. and and anthony if you can't find any if you want some really good uh video images of great tennis playing i have some of when i was younger <laughs> that you can <laughs> Is that that envy they were talking about, uh, Charles? Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we all want to see but, that. Uh, but Anthony, I'll I'll look into that if I if I find anything because I, I think I have your contact information. If I find anything, I'll send some links. All right, all right, cool. Oh, we got yeah. some suggestions down by Tiffany. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, we named a few that we kind of wanted to bring out that may not have That's been as awesome. common. Um, or you know, what what is LeBron James the first in? About really the, tally. The, what we talked what about. He, what did he do we first? Oh, first. Oh, yeah. Ain't oh, that yeah. what we're talking about? No. Right. <laughs> we're talking about first. the first black man from Akron, Ohio, to. Um, <laughs> <Minnesota. laughs> but you know, I was thinking about it. You know, if we could be the first at something, the first black something, what would I think, it be? I think just I we think are the Shaquille first. O'Neal was was the first black athlete to spend over a hundred thousand dollars at Walmart in one shopping trip. <laughs> oh. That's got to be a first. I think I think <laughs> Tiffany is talking about black people who've done who become preeminent. Uh, yeah. I mean, Beyonce yeah. has has more Grammys, but she's not the first black woman to win a Grammy. But right, she's, right, right. And I'm kind of wondering if it's the. I mean, they made some categories for her. Oh, he, now he did break the record, but he's not the first person to set a record. So, I mean, if we're talking first, I think it's a little different. Now, Pine Forge Academy is the first Adventist Academy to be nominated for a NAACP Image Award. Great. Yeah. That's Shout out. Yeah, we got to look at our first, too. We, you know, we have a lot of first. Um, even within the Adventist Church, we didn't talk about some of those. Um, within the last ten years, we've we've seen a lot of black people in positions um, that we've not seen before. Even aren't female. You, aren't you the Aren't you the first yeah. female director of communications, Tasha? I believe I am. I mean, you know, I I feel bad that uh, my predecessor, Elder Booker, is the only one I know. I, so you you know I don't so I don't know who was before you know I don't know the sequence but and, and Marlene is the first female Marlene is the first female pastor of Willow Grove Seventh Day Adventist Church yeah, okay first right. go ahead, Tally, handing out the first yes. let's go around you can't stop now I'm, Tally. I am the first uh, black man to retire twice from the Allegheny East Conference <laughs> <laughs> congrats congrats Tally. well that's right yeah. I'm not really retired yet I just quit I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> You're the first Charles? one to quit, to quit twice. Quit twice. Yeah. 
Charles is the first black the first media, media director. You, you were the first, Charles, you were the first media director. Yeah. But we got to add black in there because it's black history. We, we, well, before that, we didn't have media. We, we had a megaphone well, you know and what, two rocks you know what, that we banged other, together you know, to make noise. The one thing I was the first of, and I'm just not, I'm not tooting my horn because it didn't last very long, but I was voted <clears throat> out in Thousand Oaks, California, when the media center was out there. Mm -hmm. uh, Breath of Life and Faith for the Day and, and all those guys. Um, one year, um, I, I made such a fuss about the state of Adventist communications. Uh, they voted me the first black uh, president of the Adventist Broadcasters Association. Nice. All right. Well, that yeah, story I, got buried, I'll tell you. Yeah. Uh, it, <laughs> yeah, I think they I think they put it on page 23 of the of the Review and Herald when that happened. <laughs> but it didn't last long. It was only for a year. And uh, it was during that time when, you know, some of our, our white counterparts would were like, hmm. <laughs> well, you, you are the first you are the first media, media director for our conference. <laughs> He is. There were no media yeah. directors before Charles. Yeah, and right. it, it's been a trailblazer for many other of our regional conference and other conferences. GP um, is the first winner of a nationally televised uh, broadcast to serve as a pastor in Allegheny East. Remember, all right? You, yeah, uh, your 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 sextet won the uh, the award. That is true. Yeah. Yes. All That's right. Created fact, Pally. Base <laughs> finger here. And, and Pat is the first twin. Serving uh, in the elected okay. office in the Allegheny East Conference. <laughs> what? Yeah, wait, 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 wait. Can you see his <laughs> here? There you go. Look, the first first yeah. twins to hold the first black twins position. to hold the. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Oh, that's you know. impressive. The I Lord like looked that. down and said, "Don't do that again." <laughs> 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 yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, see, and I think that shows. Oh, I got that. one more. Oh, go ahead, GP. The upset is the first uh, podcast launched by a regional conference. Hmm. Really? Is that right? I don't know. So. I don't know. <laughs> really? <laughs> we can say it because it's on this site. Right? Okay. Like, really? We have to put the little asterisk. I think, I think it's true. I don't, think they, true. I don't think they had, I don't think a conference had a, 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 a podcast that was certified and endorsed by the conference. You've had some renegade ministers who, who put out, you know, pirated podcasts of, you know, <laughs> stuff like that, but nothing that the conference uh, san sanctioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we don't want to lose our sanction. Um, no. So we're going to just wait a while. We can. <laughs> we're going to behave. But no, this is this is this is fun um, because I think it shows that we all have potential to be the first at something, and. Um, mm -hmm. And it makes it paves the way for those behind us. And I think that's that's the important part. Um, we are showing others what they can accomplish because we've been able to do it. And I think that was the main reason for highlighting some of these um, individuals that we have. And we hope um, that it would be that it's inspiring to those of us watching to kind of look into other people who are doing um, major things because you won't always hear it on the main, new, you, you know, the news. Um, it won't always show up on the headlines. Uh, and so it's great to kind of look at some of the first. Um, I think there's like list online. You can even Google first blacks um, to accomplish X, Y, Z and get a whole list of them. So um, mm -hmm. deep dive and um, be inspired by everything that black people have contributed um, to this world. Well, All right. What, what we strive for is a day when being the first black will no longer be relevant. Yeah, right. there you go. Mm -hmm. That's right. That says yeah, it. Absolutely. Yeah, that says absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. I think we should also try to encourage our young people, um, mm -hmm. because sometimes, you know, they cower or step back and say, "Oh, that's not for me," or "I couldn't. I would never be able to achieve that." Mm -hmm. And I think we need to remind them by highlighting others that you could be the first of almost yes. anything you want. Wow. to be you know um and by using uh bringing before them the names of men and women who were the first in their area is encouraging it lets them know that yes they can do yeah 
Mm-hmm. And the goal is that by becoming the first, they won't be the last. So it's not to just have that title, oh, but you're well, hoping that. others will come behind you and follow the same path. So um, thank you guys so much for the dialogue. Thank you for yeah, our, yeah. yeah, I did too. Thank you to our um, viewers uh, for chiming in the chat. We always enjoyed that. And uh, we appreciate you kind of going down this uh, Black History um, Hall of Fame uh, with mm-hmm. us this evening. And Next week is a big week for us, guys. It What's is birthday? <laughs> our second birthday. The Upset oh, wow. Podcast, second birthday. It doesn't even seem like two years have passed. Wow. Um, but next week. <laughs> oh, now we're toilet trained. <laughs> <laughs> we're also in the no stage. <laughs> yeah, the terrible too. Uh, yeah. Still need diapers, though. Still need diapers. <laughs> Every once in a while, we just go on ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. This analogy needs to stop right now. Um, Yo, hurry up and end this. It's going downhill. <laughs> <laughs> but we're inviting you to come back next week because we plan to have a lot of fun. I mean, it's a, next week is going to be a fun, interactive show. Uh, we have some new things we want to reveal to you about um, the future of Upset, some ideas that we've talked about, uh, maybe some products that we've been promising. Um, and with, ice, with ice in it. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, our goal is to interact with all of you. So um, the invitation still stands. If you want to join us live and be in one of these boxes, mm-hmm. write us. There you we go, Tim. Make, make it happen. Upset right. AECSTA.com. Do you want to be a guest host next week? You're one of our faithful viewers. Email mm-hmm. us and we'll see if we can make it happen. All right. Upset at ACSTA.com. Yeah. All right, and guys. We will pay you twice as much as we pay all of our <laughs> Oh, <guys>. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Twice as much. You know what, Tally? Yes. Twice is not good enough. Come on. Let's go <laughs> off a little bit. <laughs> three, three times. Yeah. Three times. Yeah. Yeah. Zero you know what's so one, amazing about zero, that? Move the decimal. What's amazing about that proposition, Tally, is that Zero times anything is still zero. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like uh, very very generous generous very <laughs> Greater is your reward in heaven. <laughs> you know, I, I might also add, if I could, um, uh, Latasha, that sure. going forward, I think that uh, we all agree that Upset Podcast is not just a group of folk getting together and talking about subjects and kind of going outside the box. But ultimately, I think we want to be a help to people. Um, you know, so if someone were to say, well, what's your mission statement? Why are you doing this? You know, and it's basically to help people. And I think the next, this, the third season or the next year, um, as you had indicated with the merchandise, so that'll be our focus mm-hmm. uh, to be a help yeah. to individuals in any way that we can. And we're, we're looking for the, the followers for the podcast to help us achieve that, that goal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel like you're going to be more raw too this, this time around. You're going to really upset people this time around. We warmed up now. We yeah. warmed up two years, warmed us up. You know, it's only. If I can help somebody. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna have a new a new side podcast uh, <laughs> uh, called Say What. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love you guys too, and uh, we look forward to next week. We're gonna have some fun, so come back, invite a friend, and join us for our live birthday celebration right here next Sunday, six p.m. Same time, same place. Because if it's Sunday, it's, it's Sunday. <laughs> Upset podcast. <laughs> oh, take baby. care. Everybody right. have a great week. Bye, guys. Take care, everybody. Yeah. See you next week.